Hi everyone, this is Daniel. Welcome to class. This is the seventh lesson in our Math Space Academy series for the year nine class. So let's make a start. It's 10 o'clock. As usual, we'll be going till 11 o'clock. This is a one hour lesson. So, uh, oh, that's an old slide. That shouldn't say algebra. That should say Pythagoras' theorem. We're in lesson seven, not lesson five. Uh, so who am I? For, I think most of you have been to these lessons before. So my name is Daniel. I am a maths, mathematics teacher working at MathSpace. I've done lots of the videos that you can find inside of the app MathSpace if you are using it currently. I used to work at Swinburne University and I've got many, many years of teaching experience both online and also in the classroom. So just some of this basic housekeeping that I have to cover at the beginning of every lesson. Okay, so obviously, uh, whatever we cover in these lessons, it's not supposed to replace what you're doing at school, it's supposed to summarize ideally what you're doing in school. So um, we did Pythagoras for an hour last week, and we're going to do it for another hour this week. And so obviously, in school, you would spend more than two hours learning Pythagoras' theorem. But Today's lesson and yesterday's lesson should do a really good job of summarizing Pythagoras' theorem for you. So uh, we'll be following the math space curriculum, okay? And I believe last week I asked, and most of you actually already have access to math space, which is great. Uh, if you don't, you can always ask your teacher because they can still sign up for free and then they can get you set up. So we always record these classes. So if ever you want to re-watch these lessons, or if some of you are listening at home uh, outside of this time, still following the lessons, welcome. So these are always available 24 hours after we do the class. So tomorrow, sometime Friday, uh, today's lesson should be uploaded online. I'm gonna be asking questions in the chat box as I've always been doing the last couple of weeks. I felt like this is a really good way to engage you all. Uh, and so, yeah, if I ask you a maths question, please feel free to write your answer in the chat box. Okay, and if you've got any uh, larger questions for me, you know, you can put it in the Q&A at the end. Okay, so today's lesson on Pythagoras' theorem. Now, for those of you who were here last week, I gave you a challenging question. Okay, so we're going to look at that answer in a couple of minutes. I thought I'd first just do some revision on what we covered last week. Okay. So today we're going to do Pythagoras' theorem still, and we're going to finish off this work. So we're going to learn how to find the shorter side of a right angle triangle using Pythagoras' theorem. And we're also going to look at some fun application questions as well. Next week, we'll get a start on similarity and scale factors for um, triangles, which we, from there in a couple of weeks, we will then start our work on trigonometry. So it's good to cover this first. Now, as usual, I always point out to these videos on wootube.mathspace.co. So if you go into the Australian curriculum, you go to year nine and you go to chapter three, Pythagoras' theorem, uh, you can find Eddie Wu's 10 videos on Pythagoras' theorem if you would like to know more, okay? Or if you'd like to hear Pythagoras' theorem from a different perspective, you can go to that website. So I briefly mentioned last week uh, that Pythagoras was a famous Greek mathematician and philosopher. And so he is technically known as Pythagoras of Samos. So that's that area of Greece where he was from. Okay, so he lived, you know, in that 500 years, 500 to 600 years um, BC. Uh, and he's credited as coming up with Pythagoras' theorem only in the sense that his name is attached. But actually, uh, the ancient Babylonians were working on Pythagoras theorem problems like a thousand years before the ancient Greeks. Okay, it's just that it didn't really have a name up until um, Pythagoras was kind of then attached because he and his students were working on uh, Pythagoras problems, uh, right angle problems and finding that relationship. But that relationship wasn't really discovered by Pythagoras, it was discovered by the Babylonians, as far as we know thousand years ago, maybe there were other civilizations who were working with it before then, we just don't have that um, evidence to prove that. So this was the Pythagoras theorem. This is what we covered last week. Okay, so you always label the two shorter sides A and B, and then letter C is the hypotenuse of the right angle triangle and the hypotenuse. It's that length opposite 
the 90 degree angle. So if I just annotate on these slides for a moment, opposite the 90 degree angle is this length called the hypotenuse. Okay, and it is always the longest length of the three sides in a right angle triangle. Okay. And so last week we used this theorem to calculate the hypotenuse on um, right angle triangles where you had the two shorter side lengths, but the hypotenuse was unknown. We use Pythagoras' theorem to calculate the length of that hypotenuse. And so how you can remember uh, Pythagoras' theorem is that it's the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the two shorter sides, okay? Sometimes the two shorter sides are described in literature as the legs of the right angle triangle. So if you're ever doing some online reading and you look at the legs of a right angle triangle, they're the two shorter sides. And then the hypotenuse is the longest side. So we also last week looked at Pythagoras' theorem to prove that if a triangle has three side lengths that satisfy this relationship, then you can state the triangle must be a right angle triangle. So we did some of that work last week as well. Also, we looked at these Pythagorean triples. So any three whole numbers that satisfy this relationship, c squared equals a squared plus b squared, is known as a Pythagorean triple. Okay, and so on below in these slides, there's a whole bunch of examples of these Pythagorean triples. And what we discussed last week is that you really, as a year nine student, you only really need to memorize four unique Pythagorean triples. And then any scalar multiple of a Pythagorean triple, as long as all three side lengths are multiplied by the same uh, constant, will also be a Pythagorean triple. Okay, and this was the challenge question that I gave everyone to work on last week that you had to prove using algebra, okay, that if you've got a Pythagorean triple, ABC, you needed to prove that KA, KB and KC would also be a Pythagorean triple, where K is that same constant, okay. So I'm introducing you all to what's known as a mathematical proof. So up until now, you probably haven't done many proofs or maybe any proofs at all. This is something that you tend to start doing once you get to, you know, year 11, year 12 mathematics and also university level mathematics. They do a lot of proofs there as well. So for the year 11 and 12s, you know, you have to be doing kind of math method, specialist mathematics uh, to be exposed to these proofs. You'll see more of them in special maths than you would in maths methods. Further maths, um, Oh, sorry, I'm actually talking in the Victorian language here. Uh, so, you know, in other states, you know, you've got essential mathematics, standard mathematics, uh, and, you know, extension mathematics, okay? So in the extension mathematics, you know, you would see more of these um, proof-like problems, okay? So you, it's not called a proof if you just use an example, okay? So if I draw... Um, on my screen for a moment. If I just have, um, you know, three squared plus four squared equals five squared, and then I just look at six squared plus eight squared equals 10 squared, okay? Uh, that's an example of this, but it's not proof, okay? A proof is that it doesn't matter what numbers A, B, and C you substitute, and it doesn't matter what K value you substitute, you're going to use algebra to prove that it actually works for all values, okay? As long as they are a known Pythagorean triple. And so let me show you now what that proof looks like, okay? If you worked on this and you think you had a good idea of what the proof is, you know, feel free to write it in the chat box and I can look over it, okay? Uh, otherwise, let me show you now. So if you look at um, the first two lengths, we're trying to prove that in that Pythagorean triple, KA, KB, and KC, if we look at KA and KB and just try substituting into Pythagoras' theorem, okay? So KA all squared plus KB all squared. Ideally, we want to be able to prove that this is equal to KB all squared, okay? So if we can prove that... Um, let me write it on the board at the bottom. If we can prove that 
uh, KC all squared is equal to KA all squared plus KB all squared. If we can prove that, okay, then we've proven that this is a Pythagorean triple, all right? But we need to prove it first. We can't assume it's true, otherwise it's not a proof. You're just assuming it's correct. We need to prove it's correct, all right? So this is a challenge question. So this isn't something that would be required of you as a year nine student, okay? But I just, you know, I had those requests a couple of weeks ago to include more challenge questions into the work, okay? So if you don't understand this, it's perfectly fine, all right? This is something that, you know, you would learn to do in year 11 or year 12, so. But I'm just exposing you for those of you who are curious, right? But hopefully, I'm explaining this well enough that you will understand what I'm talking about. So, when you expand using indices, so KA all squared becomes K squared A squared, and KB all squared becomes K squared B squared, I can take out that highest common factor of K squared. Now, in the proof, we do start with the assumption that ABC is a Pythagorean triple, okay? So we know actually that C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared, because we're starting this proof with the assumption that ABC is a Pythagorean triple, all right? So because of that, we can actually say that this is gonna equal K squared C squared. I'm just substituting C squared for A squared plus B squared. And then using the indices, I can write that as KC all squared. So just using basic algebra, I have proven that relationship that I wanted to prove, okay? So KC all squared is equal to KA all squared plus KB all squared. So using those properties of algebra and indices, that's why scalar multiples of Pythagorean triples also make a Pythagorean triple, okay? So that's a cool little algebraic proof. Uh, so back to today's work. So that's the challenge question complete. All right. Um, no one's written anything in the chat box as far as I can tell. Let me just double check. Uh, nope, that's all right. Uh, so yeah, feel free to write that down if that's something that you're interested in. Finding the shorter side now is the work that we're going to be starting with today for today's work. Okay, so now that we've done that revision, we can go back to Pythagoras' theorem and start practicing finding the shorter sides of a right angle triangle. So teachers teach this in different ways. Okay, um, I'm actually going to share a whiteboard for a moment. Okay, so when starting with Pythagoras' theorem, C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Okay, and let's start with a really simple example. Um, hypotenuse of five, base length of three, what would the height be? Okay, so what you can do, some teachers will just tell you to let, you know, A or B be that unknown side, okay? And then, so one way of doing this is just to substitute these values into the formula straight away. So that then five squared is equal to a squared plus three squared. And so then the teachers will just tell you to solve. So we need to isolate that a squared term to get that a squared is equal to five squared minus three squared. Okay, and if you know the answer, feel free to write it in the chat box. Okay, uh, that's 25 minus nine, which would be 16. So then A is gonna be the square root of 16, which is four. So that's one way you can answer this. Another way is to show you what I'm about to show you on the slides is where you actually transform this equation first and then substitute the values. Okay, so if I go back to my screen, that's what I've done in the slides. So sometimes teachers will give you these formulas, right? So it's just a slight adjustment to Pythagoras' theorem. They've just subtracted one of the other known lengths from either side. So you can write that a squared is equal to hypotenuse squared minus the square of the other side length, or you can do b squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared minus the other side length. It's the same thing, really. It's just that you're changing a and b around 
Okay, so if you like, you can use this formula to solve Pythagoras problems instead. So the other way that a teacher might show you to do this is just to start straight away with a squared is equal to c squared minus b squared. And so in this case, it would be five squared minus three squared. Okay, and then it's just the same method again, all right? But maybe your teacher tells you to take the square root first. That's fine too. Okay, so several different ways uh, to answer these Pythagoras problems, but all result in the same answer regardless. Okay. Um, I just had the chat box pop up before. Yeah, great. Thank you, Yusuf E. Um, getting an answer of four. Great. Alrighty. So I think that's, yeah, that's all of the slides I need to go through today. We're going to spend the rest of today going through examples. Okay. So I'm going to do a couple of worked examples of finding the shorter side length. Okay. And then we're going to move on to some of the um, applications. So Pythagoras' theorem has a lot of obvious real life applications that we're going to be studying today. So for anyone who's thinking, why, why would we ever need to know Pythagoras' theorem? What's the point? Um, you're about to see. So Pythagoras' theorem is really useful in the trades. So anyone who wants to be a carpenter or a plumber, for example, you know, Pythagoras' theorem is actually something you'll learn uh, when you do your tape studies, okay? Because it is applicable to the work that you do on site, as an example. Um, let's see, where is it? Ah, let's see my slides. Okay. So this is the first example we'll do today. Okay. So remember these Pythagorean triads can be used to very quickly answer uh, Pythagoras questions. Okay. Just like a Pythagorean triad or triple, they're known as as well. Like they can be used to find the hypotenuse really quickly. They can also be used to find the shorter side length really quickly. Okay. So I won't use the Pythagorean triple to begin with. All right. I will just work this out as if I knew nothing about Pythagorean triples. So everyone in the chat box, why don't you tell me which of the following equations, A, B, C, or D, uh, is going to work to solve for y, okay? Uh, so Arnold, yes, I can confirm your answer is correct. Uh, anyone else? Yes, thank you, Yusuf E. I can confirm your answer is correct as well. I know there's a few more of you here today. Um, so, yep, please put your answers in the chat box, okay? Uh, the Q&A will start, we'll, we'll save for larger questions later, all right? Okay, so using Pythagoras' theorem, we've actually got a couple of different answers here, okay? So, remember this is the hypotenuse. Okay, the 10 is the hypotenuse. So C is equal to 10. Okay, we can say A is equal to eight. And then we don't know what the B is. B is the Y term. Okay, so if I use Pythagoras' theorem, C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Okay, that means that 10 squared, so the hypotenuse squared, Okay, that has to equal um, a squared, so that's eight squared plus a squared. Okay, but instead of a, I'm actually gonna write, I should, I should have written b, my apologies. So the other unknown length, right? So that's the y term squared, okay? So looking at option a, I can eliminate that as incorrect because these values are being subtracted, okay? but the subtraction should only involve the hypotenuse, right? If I've got the hypotenuse on the left-hand side being squared, I should have eight squared plus y squared, not their difference. So I can eliminate option A, okay? The other answers have y as the subject. So let's now transform this. So let's subtract eight squared from both sides of the equation. All right, so that's now going to isolate my y squared term. So y squared 
is then going to equal the hypotenuse squared minus eight squared. Okay, so I can eliminate option um, C because that Y term doesn't have a square root and I can eliminate option D because those terms are being added together. All right, the Y is not the hypotenuse. So that's why D is not the correct answer either. So by elimination, I determined that option B is the correct answer and I can see that's right. That's what I got here. Y squared was 10 squared minus eight squared. So the only correct answer guys was option B, okay? So I can now select that. So this is the equation that we would use to solve for that unknown short side length, okay? And so now when we enter this work into math space, I can enter that equation, y squared equals 10 squared minus eight squared. Okay, so if you know the answer, feel free to write it in the chat box, okay? I can already see one person's written it in there. So 10 squared is 100. Eight squared is equal to 64. 100 minus 64 is 36. So I can see two people have written the answer in the chat box so far. Uh, so for everyone else, you just have to find the square root of 36. So yeah, everyone's getting the right answer now. Well done, Yusuf, Arnold, Chetna, Remy. The answer is six. Specifically, y is equal to six, okay? You, when you write your answer, you should be writing your pronumeral y being equal to six, okay? Now, that was a Pythagorean triple, okay? Six, eight, and 10. Okay, it comes from the Pythagorean triple three, four, five. Once you multiply all of those values by two, So three times two is six, four times two is eight, five times two is 10. From that proof we saw before, remember, uh, a scale, the same scalar multiple on all three side lengths creates um, this triangle that also satisfies uh, the Pythagorean triple. And what we'll be looking at next week, I believe I spoke about it briefly last week as well. So these are actually known as similar triangles. Three, four, five. and then looking at six, eight, 10. They're similar triangles because one is just a kind of enlarged version of the other, okay? So there's this scalar factor, which we'll be talking about next week. So all the dimensions were multiplied by two to create the triangle above. And so what we'll see in similar triangles is actually that these angles uh, remain the same, okay? And that's what makes these triangles similar because all three angles remain the same when each of those dimensions, those side lengths are multiplied by the same number. So we'll talk more about that next week. And I'll remind you of how that fits into the context of um, Pythagorean triples. All right, but so looking at this question, all right, if I scroll up, remember I had those side lengths eight and 10. So if I just draw a triple, so I've got 10 and then one of my numbers is eight. So if you look at your list of Pythagorean triples, you'll see six, eight, and 10. So then you know, if you've got eight and 10 as your two larger numbers, that means six has to be that missing value, okay? So that's how you could use a Pythagorean triple to very quickly find that that Y length had to be six because you know this triangle is right angle. We're told to consider a right angle triangle, okay? Great. All right, let's move on to the next question. Considering this right angle triangle now, uh, I would like everyone to tell me which equation is going to be correct. Okay, hopefully from the work we did last question, uh, everyone will be getting this right now, okay? So which of the following equations will this um, satisfy from the sides of the triangle? Okay, so I've had three people write their answer in the chat box. A couple more wanna have a guess. Okay, 
Okay, great. I've got four answers now. I know there's a few more of you here today. So I encourage you to be brave. Okay, and you know, you're only writing your answer to me, so no one else needs to know. Okay, so thank you to, yes, I've got five people now writing the answer. Thanks very much. So well done, Arnold, Yusuf, Remy, Chetna, Sumia. Uh, all of you are correct. The correct answer is D, okay? Um, I need to turn on the chat box. I mean, the sketch pad. Right, so yeah, so I've got these side lengths of 25 and 24, okay? And then this length of B. I could just use one of those formulas that I gave you before that C, that B squared, okay? A shorter side length squared is going to be the hypotenuse squared minus the other known shorter side length squared, okay? So in this case, it's going to be the hypotenuse is 25, so 25 squared minus 24 squared. Okay, so I can eliminate these other responses. Okay, um, B, sorry, option A is wrong because that B term wasn't squared. Uh, option B is incorrect because that B term is not the hypotenuse. Okay, option C is correct. Again, B is not the hypotenuse, so that only leaves you with option uh, D as the correct answer to part A. Okay, does anyone want to tell me the answer to B? Okay, I want to give everyone one minute to tell me the answer to option B, to part B, I should say. So a couple of people in the chat box have already told me the answer, which is great. So if I was going to do this the hard way, okay, I could write this equation in All right, and then I would have to find 25 squared and then find 24 squared, find their difference, and then take the square root. However, remember there is a unique uh, Pythagorean triple that has numbers 24 and 25 in it, okay? So I know there is a Pythagorean triple of seven 24 and 25. So if you've memorized that, uh, thank you Yusuf E for reminding everyone about that Pythagorean triple, okay? So here are those numbers 24 and 25 on our right angle triangle. So that means this value has to be that smallest number seven. So without doing any Pythagoras uh, work without having to find 25 squared or 24 squared, I can write straight away that B has to equal seven. Okay, so there's another example of uh, Pythagorean triples and how they can really help you answer these questions faster uh, when you're learning Pythagoras' theorem. Great, well done. Um, yeah, I actually saw a couple of you, Arnold, Yusuf, Remy, Chetna. Uh, yeah, all of you were able to get that correct answer of seven. Well done. Okay, so now we need to find the equation as well as, um, or you don't have to find the equation, uh, but yeah, we need to find that value of y, the shorter side length, okay? So again, if you remember your Pythagorean triples, this is very easy, okay? If you don't, uh, it is tricky. So a couple of people getting the answer already. Uh, so Remy has correctly told me the equation that I would need to write, that y squared is equal to 15 squared minus nine squared. Uh, very good, Remy. So then I could then go ahead and evaluate the squares Question, would this be 15 squared minus nine squared? Would that just be six squared? I'd like everyone in the chat box to write yes or no. Okay, so I'm doing this, 15 minus nine, all squared. Is this gonna be a correct answer?
Okay, so the answer is no. Okay, it's not, right? If I press enter, I'm gonna get an incorrect result, okay? Because really, remember the order of operations says that you do not do the subtraction first, you do the powers first, okay? So 15 squared is 225, nine squared is 81. When you find their difference, it is going to be 144, okay? And when you take the square root of 144, uh, that's not going to be six, right? It would be 12 in this case. So yeah, do be careful, all right? It is a common mistake that students make, so it's okay if you thought that today, all right? When you have the difference of squares, okay, it does not equal uh, A minus B all squared, okay? So you can't make that um, assumption to try help you. Now, of course, okay, looking at um, nine and 15, okay, if I look at Pythagorean triple again, three, four and five, well, I know five times three makes 15 and three times three makes nine, okay? So then I can create this Pythagorean triple nine something and 15. And then that missing number is then 12. So that's how you could use a Pythagorean triple to immediately answer that missing side length to be 12, okay? Rather than doing the Pythagoras equation work, all right? So you're welcome to do the Pythagorean equation work, you're never gonna lose marks, okay? It's just, I'm trying to teach you that by using Pythagorean triples, you can answer these questions a lot faster, right? So if you're doing a test at the end of term or an exam later in the year, okay, this can help you save time. But if your teacher's just giving you work to do at home, like an assignment or just some homework questions, right, you can do it however you like because you have the luxury of time. Okay, let's go to the next question. I think now we're gonna look at a non-Pythagorean triad, okay? And so I can tell that's gonna be the case because it's asking you to give the answer as a third, okay? So if I look at these numbers, okay? Um, eight, 15, and then some unknown number, okay? That's no Pythagorean triad, all right? I'm not gonna be able to find a whole number uh, that goes in the middle here or a value smaller than eight, okay? So yeah, in the chat box, feel free to give me the answer for K as a third, okay? I, I welcome that, please. All right, but let me just explain for a while. So with 15, okay, remember there was Pythagorean triple nine, 15 and 17, okay? But 17 would have to be the hypotenuse in this case. For a hypotenuse of 15, we looked at that uh, Pythagorean tri triple just in the last question, nine, 12, and 15, but this is not nine or 12, it's eight, okay? So I know this is not going to make a Pythagorean triple. So I can't use them to help me finish the work, okay? So I can see uh, Remy has given me the equation that I do need to type, okay? and some people are coming up with the answer. Um, so I know that K squared plus eight squared is equal to 15 squared, okay? So the sum of the squares of the other two sides is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. So then I can subtract the eight squared from both sides of this equation to get that the shorter side length squared is the hypotenuse squared minus uh, the other side length squared, okay? So 15 squared, I worked out before was 225 and eight squared is equal to 64. So a couple of people have written to me in the chat box uh, that K squared is equal to uh, 161. Now, I'm gonna be very pedantic here for some of you who've been writing in the chat box. 
Some people, I won't say your names, have written to me in the chat box that k squared is equal to the square root of 161. And as a, if I were your teacher, you'd lose half a mark because that's not a true statement, okay? When you take the square root, okay, you have to do it on both sides of the equation, all right, in order that to be a correct statement. Okay, so really what you should have written to me in the chat box, okay, um, I'm just really teaching thorough mathematical statements here, okay? K must equal the square root of 161, not K squared, K, because you have to have that result of the square root on both sides. Yes, correct use of E, thank you. Square roots cancel that square, that's right. So this is actually the answer. This is a third, okay? It's a third that I cannot simplify, okay? 161 cannot be simplified as a third. So then the square root of 161 is the answer, okay? As an exact answer. So alternatively, what you can do is you can express this to two decimal places, but remember the question didn't ask you. The question only asked to give the answer as a third, okay? So if it says give your answer as a third or give an exact answer, You'll start to see that phrase in year nine, wanting measurements in an exact answer. That means you're not evaluating the square root, you are answering as a third, okay? So this is the same thing in the context of Pythagoras' theorem. If the question ever asks for an exact answer, it means it wants you to answer as a third, okay? Don't evaluate using your calculator at this point. So it's in the next question, Okay, now this is another one. So before we go on to the next question, here's an example where you don't get the diagram. Okay, so it's up to you. I like to draw the diagram. I'm a visual person. I like to see the problem before I then go solve it, just so that I know I'm solving the right thing. Okay, if you're not a visual learner, okay, you might be happy to answer this question without any diagram to help you. Okay, and so for those of you who are reading, a right angle triangle, hypotenuse of six, and another length of three, what would be the length of the unknown side length P? Okay. Right, each step of working as an equation, give the answer as a third. Okay, so I can see um, someone, Remy, yes, you've given me the correct line of work to give, okay. You've told me that P squared Okay, is equal to six squared minus three squared. Okay. Um, so then six squared is 36 and then three squared is nine. Okay, so keep in mind six squared minus three squared is not three squared, okay? 36 minus nine makes uh, 27, okay? So actually P is going to equal the square root of 27, okay? That's actually a third you can simplify, okay? So can anyone give me the answer if this third was simplified? So math space in this case has accepted the square root of 27, but if you were to give your answer as a simplified third, okay, in its most simplest form, what answer could you give, okay? So remember, it's different, don't evaluate, okay? You're simplifying the third. Simplifying the third is different to evaluating. So I don't wanna see an answer to two decimal places. What I wanna see is a simplified third. So yeah, I can see a couple of people, Yusuf, Chetna, you've written to me the correct answer, well done, okay? So a simplified third, like the square root of 27, for example, is the same as the square root of nine times three. And so that's the same as the square root of nine times the square root of three, using that third rule, right? Remember the square root of A times B is equal to the square root of A times the square root of B, okay? 
So then the square root of nine is three. And then I'm left with root three. So that's what I mean by simplifying a third. I am trying to take a factor out of the third, like I've done here. I've taken out this factor of square root of nine, which is three, in order to then have this as a smaller number. Okay, so instead of root 27, I'm looking at root three. So three root three is the answer to P as a simplified third. Okay, so P actually equals three root three. I want to talk about this triangle for a moment, okay? Because if I look at a um, equilateral triangle, so remember the equilateral triangle has identical side lengths. Uh, no, no, let's not, let's not do three, we'll do six. Okay, so if I have an equilateral triangle, okay, each of side length six, so if I half it, okay, now I'm gonna get base length of three on either side and these become right angle triangles, okay? So what I have just discovered is the height of the equilateral triangle. So the height of the equilateral triangle would be uh, three root three. Okay, so we're going to be, do some more work on equilateral triangles and isosceles triangles in the next chapter when we start looking at uh, similar triangles and scale factors. And actually, this specific equilateral triangle, um, I'm looking at it, I'm thinking of a different one. It's similar, okay, so it's uh, an equilateral triangle, each of side length two, okay, so then when you halve it, you know, you get those base lengths of one, okay? This triangle is gonna be very useful when you look at trigonometry in a few weeks time to find the exact value of some specific angles, okay? Because I know in an equilateral triangle, remember, those angles are always 60 degrees. And so if I've halved the triangle, um, well, that angle would be 30 degrees. So then I'm gonna be able to use trigonometry to find some exact value answers Okay, so this is just a little preview into what we'll be doing in a few weeks' time. Okay. Uh, all right, I'm going to move on. So we've only got about 15 minutes and I want to cover some applications work still. So that's just an example of a question where you can answer to decimal places. Um, yeah, no, I'm going to move on to the applications work now. Okay, great. So this question, this is now, we're gonna be talking about real life problems of how we can use Pythagoras' theorem to answer questions like this, okay? So I'm told the screen on a handheld device has the dimensions of nine by six centimeters, okay? So you could be looking at like a, a phone or something or maybe a Nintendo Switch, you know, like one of these devices. What is the value of X? Round your answer to two decimal places. So now, we're not answering as a third, we're answering correct to two decimal places. So you will need a calculator for some of these questions. Okay, so let's come up with the formula first. Can anyone tell me the formula on how to find X before you give me the answer? Okay, so I'm just waiting in the chat box for someone to give me the correct formula. Uh, thank you, Remy. So X is the hypotenuse. So this is actually work that we were doing last week, finding the hypotenuse. So X squared is equal to the squares, some of the squares of the other two sides. So six squared plus nine squared. So then I can evaluate these. Six squared is 36, you know, nine squared is 81. And then I can add these together to make 117. So now I need to find the square root of 117 as my answer, okay? And someone has evaluated this for me in the chat box, two people, and they've given me the same answer. So I'm gonna assume this is correct. So yes, the answer to correct two decimal places if you use your calculator is 10.82. Now it's okay in a program like MathSpace, but if you were doing work in your books, okay, your teacher would expect you to use the correct units, okay? So these dimensions were measured in centimeters, so that answer needs to be centimeters as well, okay? So some of you have given me the correct answer in the chat box, but you didn't write the units, okay? So that's okay in the context of using this maths program, but in your books, you need to be writing those measurements centimeters, okay? Yes, thank you, use of centimeters. 
Okay. So let's move on to another application question. Here we go. There's one for all you soccer fans out there, or football, if you're uh, if you believe it to be football. Uh, Neil and Kenneth are playing. Here we go. Football together. At one point in the game, they are near the same corner of the field. Okay. Neil is on the goal line, 11 meters away from the corner, while Kenneth is on the sideline, 17 meters away from the corner. If the straight line distance between the two players is given by letter D, find the value of D rounding your answer to two decimal places. Okay, so this question is helpful in that it is tried to draw the triangle for you. Okay, but what it didn't do is it didn't label um, this hypotenuse of length D. Okay, so if you like, what I like to do sometimes is if the triangle is like orientated in a funny way or it's a little hard for me to see whether it's a right angle triangle or not, I'll just redraw the diagram for myself and say, okay, so I'm looking at a base length of 17 centimeters and a height of 11 centimeters and I'm trying to find the uh, hypotenuse, okay? Technically, I guess if I was rotating the image, I should have those dimensions the other way around, okay? So I've rotated and flipped the image, but if I draw it just with a rotation, I should have, um, yeah, 17 centimeters as my height and 11 meters as my base, okay? And so D represents that distance between Neil and Kenneth, okay? And so, yes, I saw uh, Remy has given me the correct relationship, okay? So D squared is equal to 11 squared plus 17 squared. So again, this is not a Pythagorean triple, okay? So I have to evaluate the squares. 11 squared is 121. Uh, 17 squared, I think is 289 from memory. Yep. So then adding these values together, I get it's going to be 420, I believe. Oops, no, I made that. I made a mistake. Ah, 410, 410. There we go, that's better. Right, so then I can take D to be the square root of 100, uh, 410. Okay, and so then you have to give your answer correct to two decimal places, okay? If you gave your answer to one decimal place, uh, this would be a mistake, okay? So D, I'm told from some people is equal to 20.25, and that is the correct answer. So you've got to be really careful with your round off error, okay? Um, if you wrote 20.24 or 20.26, that's technically incorrect, okay? Your teacher might be forgiving and give you the answer anyway, give you full marks, okay? But technically, to two decimal places, this should be 20.25. And remember your units of measurement. So I can see some of you remembered this time, so very good. All right, giving my answer, this is in meters. So although the computer program hasn't given me a spot to write that, okay, you, in your books, you would still be expected to give that measurement in meters because those are those distances of 11 and 17 meters, right? So to write this as an answer, okay, the straight line distance between Neil and Kenneth must be 20.25 meters. All right, we've still got 10 more minutes, so let's work on some more questions, okay? So here is a can of soft drink, all right? And it is being drawn in the shape of a cylinder. Okay, so we're told the soft drink can has a height of 12 centimeters and a radius of three centimeters. We now need to find L, the length of the longest straw that could fit in the can. Okay, so this question has been generous because it's actually drawn the problem for you. Okay, so the longest straw that would fit in this can is if you go from uh, one side of the circle to the other side at the bottom, okay? So that's this length here. So that's the straw that's sitting in the can, okay? Um, so keep in mind when I draw this triangle now inside the can, 
I've got this height and this right angle to the diameter. Okay, and then I've got that length to be my hypotenuse. But keep in mind this length in the diagram only gave me the radius. So the diameter is always, remember, twice the radius. So I should be using a length of six centimeters. Okay. So that means I've got this uh, length of six and this height of 12. What is then the length? Okay. So some people have given me an answer of 12 centimeters. Uh, ah, but that's maybe because they've rounded the answer down to the nearest centimeter. Okay. All right, so let's have a look. So L squared, all right, using capital L has to be six squared plus 12 squared. Okay, and so six squared is 36, 12 squared is 144. Adding these lengths together, 144 plus 36, I get an answer of 180. All right. So then L is going to be the square root of 180. Okay. And I know that has to be greater than 12, right? I know 12 is not the right answer because uh, the square root of 169 is equal to 13. Okay. So I'm looking at a number above 13, not 14. I mean, not 12, sorry. Uh, looking at this number square root of 180, okay, uh, that is the same as... Hmm, let's have a look here. No, 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 no. Um, I mean, it's the same as the square root of, what's that divided into four? No, not four. Um, okay, I mean, I know it's the same as nine times 20. Okay, which actually is the same as the square root of nine times the square root of four times the square root of five. Okay, so this is if you were going to give your answer in exact form. Okay, so then that would be three uh, times two times the square root of five. Okay. I've answered that correctly, haven't I? Nine times two is 18 times 10 is 180. Yep, so square root of nine times square root of four times square root of five. So I get three times two, six root five is my answer in exact form. Okay. But the answer does ask uh, for a centimeter answer, okay? So six square root of five, I can write as my answer, okay? But I'm supposed to be giving it as. So interesting, some people have given me 13.41, others have given me 13.42. If I try 0.1, I get it wrong. But 0.2, I also get it wrong. Okay, so just using some of the solutions that you guys have given me in the chat box, uh, remember it rounds down to the nearest centimeter. So yeah, that's why you have to answer actually the rounded version. So the length is actually, I mean, I should be using approximately equals, right? Really, it should be approximately equals 13. L should be approximately uh, 13 centimeters, okay? But because the... Um, you know, the instructions were to round the answer, you're allowed to use the equal sign, okay? So yeah, approximately that straw, you could have a length of 13 centimeters, which will then fit inside the can of soft drink. Uh, all right, I think we've got time for one or two more problems. Um, let's see, let's just do one. Let's do this one. Okay, so I'm told the top of a flagpole is six meters above the ground 
and the shadow cast by the flagpole is six is 13 meters long. Okay, so the distance from the top of the flagpole to the end of the shadow is D, find D rounded to two decimal places. Uh, actually, I'm not gonna do this one just because it's another example of finding the hypotenuse. I ideally would like to find a shorter length. No, they're all examples of finding the hypotenuse, aren't they? Uh, not this one, the height, okay. All right, well, let's do this one. Lucy's house has these outer dimensions. We need to find the height of the house rounded to one decimal place, okay? So we're actually finding uh, from the top to the bottom that height of the house, okay? So I know that the bottom half of the house is just this uh, rectangle, okay? And so I can see that that's got this height of 3.5 meters, okay? So going from the bottom uh, to the top here, I know is 3.5 meters. And what I don't know is this extra height here, this part, this, um, which I'll call X. Okay. So the height is going to be, let me write somewhere else. It's going to be 3.5 meters plus some unknown value X. Okay. So now looking at the roof, okay. Uh, looking at one of these right angle triangles, I have this hypotenuse of 4.9 meters. I don't know X, but now I've got to figure out what this base length is. Okay, well, because I'll call this letter A, okay? Because I've got the same uh, slant length on that roof of 4.9 meters, okay? And they're both sharing the same height X. That means these side lengths are identical, okay? So you're actually splitting the house in half and you can find the base length to be half of this measurement of 9.2 meters, okay? And so, yep, uh, Remy, Chetna, Yusuf, you've given me that correct base length, correct? It is 4.6 meters. So now I can find the height to be uh, of the roof, basically, the height of the roof is gonna be X squared equals 4.9 squared minus 4.6 squared. So then in my calculator, I can find that to be the square root of 4.9 squared minus 4.6 squared. So the height of the whole house is going to be the 3.5 meters plus the square root of 4.9 squared minus 4.6 squared. And that will give me the height of the house, okay? So I'm rounding to one decimal place. And so I need to find then in my calculator the square root of this. Uh, it looks like from someone's answer in the chat box, uh, they think it's 6.4, rounded to one decimal place. Um, okay, that is wrong by the looks of it. That's not, yeah, it can't be 6.4. It's got to be less than four. Yeah. Okay, so I'll just pull up my calculator quickly. Uh, 4.9 squared minus 4.6 squared is equal to 2.85, okay? So then I have to take the square root of that to get my answer. And to get 1.68, okay? Which I could round up to 1.7, okay? So if I do 3.5 plus 1.7, that's gonna give me my correct answer. Okay, so adding these together, 
I get an answer of 5.2 meters. So actually no one in the chat box up until right now was able to give me the answer, okay? So uh, you might wanna um, you know, revise over these type of problems, these like composite shapes where you still need Pythagoras' theorem to come up with a measurement, okay? Because yeah, a couple of people were making some mistakes uh, with finding that height of the house, okay? All right, that's pretty much it for today, guys. So thanks for coming to the lesson. So now we've finished Pythagoras' theorem. Next week, we'll be looking at scale factors and similarity. Um, I'll go to the chat box, sorry, the Q&A. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any questions. All right, so we might finish for the day. Uh, I'll just dismiss that question, yeah. So thank you all for coming. Uh, next week, I'm not sure if I'm actually gonna be here, okay? Uh, I imagine, I might not be able to come. Um, I've got some things on next week. So we'll still be running the lesson, Math Space Academy, okay? But it might be someone else. It might be me. I'm still not 100% sure, okay? But if I'm not able to run it, someone else is going to come. So it'll just be for next week. You'll have another teacher uh, starting the work on scale factors and similarity, all right? And then the following week, I'll be back. It's just for the one-off lesson that I might be unavailable. I'm actually moving house. So that's why I might not be able to come. It will just depend on how much packing I can do between now and next week. Okay. All right. I'm going to finish there. Thanks everyone for coming. Uh, my name's Daniel. I hope to see you all again next week. Mm -hmm.